everyone, it's Tammy with Shabby Fabrics. I have a really fun project for you today. This is by Coach House Designs. This quilt is called Christmas Eve. I love this collection. This is by Deb Strain with Moda. It's called Holidays at Home. And there really is no place like home at Christmas. And that this quilt just brings that all home to me. Um, so what I'm gonna show you is what you get in a kit. We do still have kits available. We only have a limited number of kits left. They're gonna come like this. They're shrink wrapped all together. And I have split this one to show you your fabrics are folded together on the inside. So when you first get this, you're gonna take your pattern out first. Let's go ahead and do that. And inside this pattern, you have a full color sheet that is gonna tell you exactly which fabrics you have in here and how much of each you have. This is such an excellent reference sheet. I love that it's all in color. Sometimes some patterns are in black and white and you're trying to struggle. Now is it this pattern or this pattern? They all look the same in black and white. Full color makes a huge difference in this. They've taken that extra step in this pattern. Okay, so we're just gonna set that aside. So this is the kit, has the panel included. This is the backing option. This is an add-on to this kit. So if you love this backing, it's so cute with the little chickadees on it. If you love this backing, go ahead and grab that at the same time. And I'm gonna show you how fun it is to put this quilt together. I have found a ruler that makes this super easy and I can't wait to show it to you. So let's clear the table and let's get started. All right, so we're back. I have my table cleared. I have my panel here with me. And I also have my magic sizing. The importance of using magic sizing on your fabric, I cannot emphasize that enough. I love magic sizing. I definitely use this on all of my fabric before I uh, cut it. So you're just gonna spray the back lightly with magic sizing. Use an iron. I don't use steam generally when I do this. I just use a dry iron. And I'm gonna move that iron back and forth the same direction as the salvage on the back. And I'm not pressing with a lot of force on this iron. I don't wanna stretch my panel or cause it to uh, become misshapen at all. All right, so once we get that done, the first thing they're gonna tell you to do is you're gonna cut your panels apart. All right, so I'm gonna use my Creative Grid spinning mat. Let's move this to the center. This is a really nice mat. It spins really nicely and it's secure on my table when I push down on it, which I like. I am gonna use the Creative Grid seven and a half inch ruler. Seven and a half inch is not a common size. Um, when I made this quilt, I decided that having the correct size ruler is gonna make all the difference in the world. You can, we have six and a half inch rulers, eight and a half inch rulers, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. I don't have seven and a half. So we found a creative grid, seven and a half inch square. I love this ruler. Let me show you how quick and easy this is to square up these panels to seven and a half. So I'm gonna take this ruler. It has a bullseye in the center of it. That is dead center of my pattern, of my design here. So let's center this on our birds. And it doesn't matter how this panel is sitting on my mat here. It doesn't matter because I'm not using the mat, the lines on the mat. I'm actually using the ruler to square this up. So I have the bullseye in the center. And I'm just gonna start lining this up. I have an inch on this side. I have just over an inch. I'm gonna back that up. I have inch and a quarter here. I've got inch and a quarter here. I like that. That looks really good to me. I'm just gonna turn my ruler a little bit so that this is on the diagonal, on this diagonal line here. All right, so I like the way that looks. I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm pushing down with my hand so nothing's gonna move. I did just change out this blade for a fresh blade and I can tell that. Cuts very nicely. So I'm pushing down with my hand on here because I'm now gonna drag this panel with me. Here we go. There it goes. Right around. Make another cut. Adjust my hand and now turn again. 
see how that panel just kind of rolls right around with me here? But my ruler is not moving at all because I'm holding that down. There we go. Let's turn this and make our final cut, just like that. Let's take a look. Ha, perfect. I like the way the birds are centered. They're upright, beautiful. So let's do this again. Let's do the next one. This one has a house in it. So one thing I will do when I have a house is I wanna line up the straight edge. Let's straighten everybody up here. Okay. I wanna line up a line on my ruler with the bottom of the house. That's gonna make sure that my house is actually square and straight in my block. All right, so again, I have my bullseye. I'm looking at my target. I'm gonna move this out of the way so you can see. I'm just gonna kind of start adjusting my ruler up and down. I know that's a half an inch. This one is three quarters. I'm gonna come up a little bit. So now I'm pretty much squared this way. Now let's do the sideways. I'm a half an inch, half an inch. This looks good. All right, so now I'm gonna look at this line right here at the bottom of this house. Oh, I think I want him like right here so that that's straight right across the bottom of this house. And I can also see this mark right here is tracking right along the edge of the house. So I know that this is squared off in my ruler. All right. Here we go. One cut. We're going to spin. Again, I'm pushing down on that ruler because I want that panel to come with me. Kind of fold it up on me there. All right, let's do that again. There we go. Take that off. And let's finish the cut. Just like that. There, perfect. You can see my house is perfectly straight on there. I like that. Okay, to cut the center panel, I've already cut the other three across the top. There's three across the top. I've already cut those off ahead of time. But I wanted to show you that when I do this, I'm not cutting into this center panel at all because you are gonna cut the center panel out and that's what makes a center portion of your quilt. So it's important that you're not cutting into it. I didn't try and guesstimate where to cut these. I just simply put a corner of this on my mat, put a ruler on it, and cut it out exactly where I needed it. That way I'm not wasting fabric or cutting into this upper panel accidentally. All right? Okay, so let's set this aside. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some very narrow strips to frame our block. So I have cut those ahead of time. But I'm going to show you some tricks or some tips actually on how I get these to stay straight. All right. Because a lot of times when you have a very narrow piece of fabric like this, it's very easy to get them crooked. And when you start sewing them, you just need to keep them very, very straight. So I think one of the best tips I can give you, I'm going to lay it on here just where I want it. I'm going to use these Extra Fine Patchwork Pins by Clover. These are amazing pins. They're very, very fine. They're very thin, very, very sharp. These come from Japan. They're very sharp steel. I'm gonna use several pins, even though I know that I could probably take this to my machine and sew it, no problem, without pinning it. Because this is a narrow strip, you're definitely gonna to wanna to take just a little bit of time and put some pins in it. I promise you're gonna like the way it comes out better if you put pins in it versus no pins at all. All right, let's line up this one. I'm gonna go ahead and pin the other side and then I'm gonna to go to the machine and sew both sides. And I will show you how I press these and make sure they're straight. Okay, I'll see you at the machine. All right, so here we are at the machine. I am sewing on a Bernina 770. I have a quarter inch foot on, and I know that this little mark right here is my quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to stitch, and I'm just gonna keep the edge of my fabric right here. 
and I'm gonna sew as straight as I possibly can. This hand is just gonna guide my fabric through. This hand is just kinda here for support. Okay, so this is really my left hand is doing all the work and that's why my fingers are, are splayed out across my fabric. Okay, here we go. All right, let's pull our pins out and let's take it to the iron. Okay, today I've got the Aliso iron on set with me. I like this, it's got an auto lift. The minute you touch it, it lowers the iron. I like that. So I, what I did was I just pressed this seam. I just kind of set my seam and I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm just going to kind of finger press this open. I'm just going to run my iron along here. I'm not using any steam. Steam will a lot of times stretch fabrics and I'm not putting motion back and forth. I'm just simply moving the iron along that seam. You can see how that press that. Let's do it again. Let's heat up that seam finger press it open and run that iron along there. Okay, so I'm using a wool pressing mat. All right, so you can see how nice and straight those edges are. All right, let's put the top and bottom borders on. This is done exactly the same way. Again, I'm gonna use lots of pins because I want these on perfectly straight. Because there's black surrounding this block, you will definitely notice if these are not stitched on straight. That's why I'm taking the time to do this the right way. It always pays off. When I take the extra time to do something right, it always pays off in the end. I like that. It's like instant results for doing the right thing and making sure you sew it slowly, using your pins, all the good habits that good quilters have. All right, I'll see you back at the machine. All right, we're gonna press this out and move on to the star block. Oh yeah, that looks really nice, I like that. So pretty, that red really pops against that black. It is so pretty. Okay, look how pretty that is. I love it. That block looks great. All right, so you just continue making those. You'd also do the same thing with the center of a quilt. You would do the same thing with that block. All right, so let me set these aside. Let's take a look at that star block. Now that star block, again, your color fabric chart here that's included with your kit is gonna come in very handy right now. Because you have fabric four, fabric five, fabric six, and fabric seven. All right, so we're gonna make a star block. We're gonna use our black, and we're gonna sew a diagonal line on here. So our first one goes here, and piece four goes on, and it's a sew and flip, just like that. Now I don't want my bird to be upside down, so I'm gonna play with this a little bit until I get this bird right where I want him. I actually think that's better. Let's try one more time. Let's do it like that. I like that. Okay, 
So there are several ways to do this. The first way, which I'm sure you all have done, is you start drawing the line, right? So I take a friction pen and I'm gonna draw the line corner to corner. We've all done this, right? Now you're gonna sew on this line. We're gonna cut away this part, flip it, press it, and go on, right? Okay, the other way to do this, let me take that line off of there, is I can use a corner clipper. A corner clipper is a Creative Grids folded corner clipper. This is by Deb Heatherly. This is a clever little, little, oh, you know what, excuse me. This is by Susan Nelson, designed this ruler, not Deb Heatherly. Deb Heatherly does a lot of the other ones that we use. This one is done by Susan Nelson. All right, so I need to put my line, we know our line goes this direction, right? I'm gonna turn this around until I can put my ruler on here. So the diagonal on my ruler lines up with the diagonal that I want to sew and cut. All right, so when I use a folded corner clipper, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up two and a half inches, line up this mark here, and I'm gonna take a rotary cutter, and I'm actually gonna cut that off right now, right? Now I don't have to draw the line. Now I know exactly where my quarter inch is, right here, corner to corner. So I'm gonna take that to the machine and sew corner to corner. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm gonna press this towards the red. There we go, just like that. All right. Let's put our little bird in the middle here. He can be in the middle. I like that. Put our block together. All right, that kind of gives us a target so we know where we're going, right? All right, I have some black squares. There we go. Nope, that's another half square like this. Okay, so now we need fabric five. Okay, so let's audition our little bird here. And I know that I'm gonna cut this portion off. You can audition him like this, right? You can fold that corner. This is how our star block goes. He goes like that. I like that little bird right there. Let's do it like that. Let's fold this over, okay. Now, another way we can do a half square triangle is we can use a product called Diagonal Seam Tape. This is by Cluck Cluck Sew. Now, I've already installed this on my sewing machine. What you do is the red line goes down the dead center and that's right even with your needle and you have a quarter inch on either side of it. Let me show you how this works. So now I'm gonna sew corner to corner without marking anything, no marks whatsoever on this, all right? I'm gonna put a pin on here just to hang on to that square because I don't want that to move, all right? But I'm gonna start sewing here and go to here and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so here we are at the machine and you can see this is my diagonal seam tape we have on. The red line designate center. This is center, this is where my needle is sewing, all right? So I wanna sew corner to corner. So when I put this on here, get to the end, there we go. So when I put this on here and start sewing, I just wanna keep this corner right here on this red line. And I know I'm gonna sew directly on the line, all right? So the trick is not to look at your needle, but you're looking right here where that red line is. It's kind of tricky. Look at that. See that, I'm watching that red line. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Yep, that'll work. So now I'm gonna trim it to a quarter inch. 
And now we're going to press. And there's our little bird face. Look at that. There he is. Just like that. All right. Okay, now I'm going to continue on. I'm going to do another flying geese here with this one in this corner. And I'm going to do another one here with this one in this corner. All right, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back and I have sewn one, one square for each point on our star, which actually looks kind of cute right now, doesn't it? I like it. Let's add a few more. So now I'm going to add one to here, one to here, one to here, and one to here, right? Then we'll have a full star block and we'll be ready to go. So let me go ahead and do that. We're going to flip this over. We're going to sew corner to corner and I'm going to use that diagonal seam tape again from Cluck Cluck Sew. This works really uh, this is really slick. I like the way you do this. You start in the corner and you just sew. No drawing the line. I like it. All right, so we got them all sewn together. Let's get them all trimmed and pressed out. And we're going to put our star block together. I like that. Not having to draw the lines really does save you a lot of time. I like that. Anytime I find a time saver that's accurate and makes it easier, that's a good thing, right? That's always a good thing. Get these pressed out. And again, I'm not using steam on these. I'm just pressing these down. There we go. Folding that seam back. Hold that for a second there. All right, let's put our star block back together here. Go ahead and assemble this like this, like this this. Awesome. It worked out. Look at that. They all match. Yay. All right. Now I'm ready to assemble it. So as you would expect, you're going to assemble this together here. We're going to assemble. This is a four patch unit. Let me split these apart. This assembles like this. This assembles as a four patch unit here. This, you know what? The square is not a square. I don't know what happened there. Let's make him two and a half because he is not going to go together with his friends very well if he's not a two and a half inch square. There we go. That's better. Okay. All right. So this goes together as a four patch unit. These two, these two, pressure seams opposite, nest them together and put this together. These two come on to here. This goes on here and this goes on here. Just like that. Or your star block, just as you would expect, your normal piecing a star block together. That's what I have for you today. These star blocks are all in here. You're making a half star block and a full star block. Very good detailed instructions. They, they give you a wonderful map of the quilt telling you exactly what fabric goes where, or you can just mix it up and do it scrappy as you please. You have a lot of fabric to do that and you do have extra pieces. So thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you uh, tuning in and taking the time to watch this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this. Also remember to subscribe. You want to hit that bell. That way you'll be notified the next time we have a new video released. And I'll see you next time on a Shabby Fabrics video.